Ah, Dune Imperium. In case you don't know, I'm a giga fan of these games. I have the base game, both expansions, the sequel, the deluxe edition. Heck, I've even painted the minis, sleeved the cards, got the promo cards, and even made little custom spice vials. What can I say? It's a great franchise. And when I heard the digital release is on its way, well, suddenly it's on my computer, it's on my Pixel, it's on iPhones, it's everywhere on all the time. And honestly, it's kind of completely taken over my life. I have multiple asynchronous games running right now. And, and look, look at these little notifications. It's great, whenever it's my turn, it just pings me and I'm back in game. Dune Imperium is back, nerds, and it's easier than ever. So let's start with the game part. Dune Imperium is the 2020 massive hit board game based on the first Dune movie, which is based on the first half of the Dune book. If you've never played before, you are blessed to have a beautiful adaptation available at your fingertips. The game is a brutal, tense, mentally exhaustive, turn-based worker placement deck builder hybrid. Put simply, you play cards that let you put a little dude on a board space that activates. That space can be on the planet, Arrakis, and it gives you spice or troops, or can represent sending an envoy to one of the four factions. Or can be negotiating with the great houses of the Landstrad, or making deals with the mega company of Chelm. Of course, placement of these workers is one half of the game, but the other half is deck building. This means you need to strategically manage your persuasion resource to buy cards from a communal shop. These cards get added into your deck and allow for all kinds of wacky strategies. Ultimately, you want to score 10 points that triggers the end game phase, and whoever has the most points at the end of that final round wins the game. And it's a great game. I've spoken a lot about it, where I kind of rambled about Dune Imperium being a dead game. And strangely enough, it is. Dune Imperium, the base game, has been upgraded through two major excellent expansions, each one representing two factions, one of them being the technological Ixians and the other being the Frankenstein-esque Hoylaxu. Not to mention, there is a superb sequel game of Uprising. Now, what this means is quite simple. This version of Dune Imperium that's digitally available is the worst version of Dune Imperium. It lacks a variety of strategies that come from the expansions and it also lacks the nuanced layers of depth and various gameplay refinements that the sequel game provides. I wouldn't even consider this a controversial opinion. The base Dune Imperium is the worst version of Dune Imperium. Now, normally this would be absolutely crushingly awful. Why would I ever want to play the worst version of a game when I have all this neat stuff already in my hands? But there is one advantage that this digital game takes full control of, which is it's the perfect entrance point into the world of mid-weight board games. And what I mean by this is that digital Dune Imperium has the worst version of Dune Imperium, but it's also the best board game translation into a digital format feels so good playing digitally, and everything works exactly like how I'd want it to. Dune Imperium Digital dunks the feeling of a board game. First, when you actually get in, there's a half-decent tutorial. It goes over everything piece by piece and is engaging enough that first-time players can go through it all while being mildly entertained. Then, simple enough, there's a solo and multiplayer section. And let's go into solo. Okay, first, versus AI makes sense. You can set up a game and play against some AI. And let's go take a look at challenges. And challenges is where the meat of the solo play is. I've played through most of them, but each of these challenges are great. Each challenge has two difficulties and the starting level of medium is perfect for people who are just wrapping their head around the game. Each one focuses on a different aspect of the game from deck building to resource management, to combat, to alliances, Benny Gesserit card, the quiz at Hatterack, and they all force you to put on your head in a different way. They're each a delectable little puzzle, which teaches you how to get noticeably better at the game. Plus, after you're done with the normal challenge, the hard variant unlocks, which are actually quite tricky and require you to approach the game from a totally different perspective. You kind of have to reevaluate all your previous conceived notions on how to play. These challenges, especially the hard difficulty, reward clever play, and you definitely gain a sense of mastery over the game. Kind of like edutainment for Dune Imperium. Speaking of the AI, these AI difficulty levels are very well tuned. 
easy is extremely approachable and a basic understanding of the game's objectives will result in a victory for the player. Medium has some game, they can get Swordmaster, sneak some alliances, buy some Spice Must Flows, but they don't slay your game plan. Hard is a squeeze though. Like the Fremen after they die, these hard AIs will trick you. And I don't find them impossible or unfair, but it's the perfect stepping stone before you go into online play. Lastly, in solo play, there are these refreshing skirmishes. Like the challenges, each one has a little flair and a little spice if you would care to try it. These skirmishes modify the rules, but also add point modifiers to compete in a ladder. You get three tries, and while it's not so bad to get a first place in each of these challenges, optimizing your gameplay within three tries to score as high as possible threads the line of difficulty because you're trying to score points but also win the game. And sometimes you might need to do a suboptimal move for extra points. It's a lot of fun and seeing your season and your game scores relative to your other friends and other people, it's kind of neato. Now, when it comes to the multiplayer portion, Dune Imperium slaps it. Once you go to the lobbies, it's easy enough to get a game and get started with some random people or friends. You can even add in some AI enemies if you want. Then you can choose the leader selection method and the timing method. You can play with a 90 second turn timer under the live option, or you can play asynchronous. The live option is fine. It works as expected, but I'm gonna be honest, my group and I love asynchronous Dune. It's an absolute blast. We usually have a couple games running at a given time, and each game can take from one day to a week. It's so enjoyable strategizing, taunting each other, and reflecting on the terrible decisions I've made in a game. The asynchronous game mode makes an already pretty great game shine so much brighter. And the overall online implementation is just so pure. It captures the feeling of sitting across the table as good as one could possibly hope. The game just works, and when it's your turn again, the game goes through all the actions you missed to catch you up to speed. You can also check the history of previous turns, as well as inspect the cards played from other players, and even what's left in your own deck. Dune Imperium wants you to have the knowledge you need, so when you make a bad decision, it's all on you. And I know what some people might say, well, can't you just play over Tabletop Simulator? All that extra stuff is already there. And oh yeah, I know, the Tabletop Simulator version of Uprising X Immortality, they all work great, but there is something missing, and that something is approachability and ease of use. Life can be busy, and there's something just so friendly about starting an asynchronous game of Dune Imperium, not needing to teach anyone how to play, not worrying about the time restriction or messing up or anything like that, that makes the digital adaptation perfect for people who like games, but don't have the drive to download Tabletop Simulator or hop on Discord or even learn how to play a board game. There's a niche for people who want to really crunch it over at Tabletop Simulator. And I respect and I love that play. But there's also a niche for people who want to play games without much hassle and really to focus on the game itself, which the digital adaptation of Dune Imperium absolutely excels at. I'll give you another example. As I mentioned, I really like asynchronous play of Dune Imperium. I can easily get friends into it and people understand the game without much explanation. I also really like Twilight Imperium and playing Twilight Imperium async is also possible. The thing is playing async digital Dune Imperium has about a sidewalk step barrier of entry while playing asynchronous Twilight Imperium over Discord has the barrier of entry of donating a majority of your hippocampus. Often ease of use is the greatest factor in actual use and Dune Imperium Digital slams that aspect. Dune Imperium Digital is a celebration of modern board games and is the perfect entry point into the contemporary board game market. The game has no microtransactions, no fussiness, it is polished and smooth. Single player provides enough to sink your teeth in and keeps the base game interesting through these modifications. While the online portion is an absolutely excellent translation of the tabletop feeling. The sound design and the little graphical flutters all create a very well-rounded experience that is approachable and delectable. The largest problems of this game are problems that can be solved. We already know that the first expansion, Rise of X, is in production and certain features of the game like the online events haven't been put in full swing yet. So while Dune Imperium, the base game and the digital adaptation are the worst version of Dune Imperium, the stellar digital adaptation creates the practically perfect entry point into modern board games. 
and really is just a great time for anyone who enjoys tense and strategic games. All of this said, I think my favorite thing about Dune Imperium Digital is that it's reinvigorated my friend group's interest in Uprising. And I think that this can happen to a lot of people who may have never gone into board games at all. Getting the hang of it can be extremely difficult. So wrapping your head around a modern game in an easy and natural way creates that interest in what's next. So where does this all end up? Well, I'll do it like this. Dune Imperium from the gameplay perspective is a nine out of 10. While it's definitely my least favorite way to play the game, it's still a classic banger that hits all the right spots. The worst one in a series of excellence is still great. From tension to excitement to disappointment, the game has everything to keep you enthralled. On the other hand, the digital translation aspect is absolutely stellar. 9.8 out of 10. It really does capture that tabletop feeling better than any other digital adaptation I've ever played. And the ease of use just makes the app so much more approachable. And it works for all kinds of people. Overall, if you average the two, Dune Imperium Digital gets a 9.4 for me. It hits hard and I hope to get more people into it so that more people are willing to play in person as well. Thank you so much for watching and take care.